Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Streaky and today I'm going to show you my mastering chain that I'm using in 2023. If you're new around here, my name's Streaky. I've been a mastering engineer for over 25 years, working with some of the world's leading artists and I'm on YouTube and everywhere else to try and help you get better sounding music for mixing and mastering. But today, what am I using on my mastering chain? Well, I am a hybrid mastering guy. What that means is I use hardware, plus I use um, plugins and software. There's no point really, unless you want me to, let me know in the comments of me going through my hardware because that's probably irrelevant to you because you're using software, so you wanna know what type of plugins I use, why I use them. So let me dive into the computer and explain to you the different software that I use and how you can use them too so that you can get some great results from your mastering as well. So with mastering, I tend to think of it as three main areas. These areas are covered by different types of plugins, but the three areas, EQ, compression, and limiting. Now, when I started mastering, they were the three things I started to use and I had one of each. Now I've got various different hardware ones and these are the software ones that I use. So let's start with EQ. This ATR 102, now you might think, yeah, well that's tape saturation. It is, but I like to use it for the EQ. So I think the EQ sounds cool on it, but you also do get a bit of like a tape kind of sound too. That's what I use this for. It's really good on the way in on sort of rock stuff. Don't use it on everything, obviously, like all these plugins I'm going to show you, I haven't got them all in. These are just things that my kind of go-tos at the moment in 2023. So yeah, I like that one. That's pretty cool. Just for getting a sound, warming stuff up, getting a bit of vintage vibe on there and using the EQ in a sort of old school way. Next up, the Bax EQ. This is the master version. I use this because it's just a really good way to get a balance of the mix. So if there's too much top or too much bottom, I can just sort of curve it around quite quickly to get the mix kind of in a steady state. Sounds pretty good. Sounds really close to the original, which I used to have as hardware. But this sounded so close that I was quite keen to just sell the, uh, the hardware really. Although I might get it back because I kind of miss playing with knobs, but that's another story. Next up, we've got the classic, obviously, that everyone uses now and I'm using all the time, which is the FabFilter Pro Q3. It's not gonna add any color and stuff to things, but it is just sort of your Swiss Army knife of EQs. It's got dynamic EQ in there, which is really ha helpful if you watch my channel a lot, or if you watch my Instagram, you'll see I do loads with um, demonstrations with this. High-low cuts, you've got everything. You can go tight, you can go wide. It's just sort of, just does everything you want it to do and it's so easy to use um, from the graphical interface. So use that nearly every single track, I'll use that in some way. The next thing is a new one, which is by Metric Halo. This is the Sontech clone. So this Sontech plugin has been made with Burgess McNeil, who is the main guy that built it in the first place. So I'm guessing this sounds pretty close. It sounds good to me, so I'm liking it. Just using it for the shelving, as I said, pretty nice. Then I've got the classic pull tech. You'll see my pull tech trick that I use a lot. So I use this for just boosts and stuff, really wide things, bit of color in there. Sometimes I'll just run through this, just having it on, because it sounds, it's got a vibe. So I might not even use the EQ on there, but I'll just use it for its feel, depending on the track, to what the track needs. What else have I got on here? Okay, EQ wise, I like this a lot, the um, Curve Bender, just for giving that kind of vintage sound. It's quite nice, just adding a bit of top. Usually I use this right at the end of my chain. You know, if I've compressed something or if I've de something, then I might put a little bit of top back on with this because that's quite nice. Bottom end's pretty cool. It's just a nice old bit of kit, really. Then if we go on to compression. So the compressors that I'm using are the Fab Filter Multiband, obviously. I use this for the low end a fair bit. If you've watched my channel again, you'll see I've got loads of videos videos on the how to use the Pro MB. I use it in the mids for drawing them out. There's so many things you can do with it. It's just a brilliant bit of kit. All the Fab Filter stuff is. If you haven't got the Fab Filter stuff, I suggest you buy it. I don't work for them, but I get paid for them, but they're just standard procedure really for mastering. The next one is SSL Comp. Loads of different versions of this. This is just to get a gluey sound in the mix to kind of bring the mix together if it needs it. I tend to use this Waves one. I used to use the one that had a side chain on it to cut the um, detection filter on the low end. Don't have that at the moment. So I just use that as a sort of um, 
as a gluer if I need it. I've got a de-esser. My favorite de-esser is the Vice de-esser. Just really nice, clean sounding. Even just going through this with a few settings on is really nice. Just to soothe, you know, smooth the mix out. I say soothe, I do use soothe now and again. But the de-esser on this is it's not affecting the mix too much. It's adding a nice bit of clarity and poshness to the sound. So I like this. It gives it a kind of posh feel. I've got the hardware version of the EQ. Love that. The plugin sounds really similar. Then I've also got, which isn't a DSA or EQ. This is something I've been using a little bit recently, which is the Ozone Imager. It's quite nice because you've got separate bands for different types of stereo manipulation. So if something's sounding a little bit too mono, I can open it up a bit. And again, if it's sounding a little bit too wide, especially in the low end, I can bring that in. So this is a nice, nice tool for doing that. Again, love all the Ozone stuff. Never used to, hated it. I used to think it sounded crap. Now I think it sounds all right. I think they've got it going. Most of the stuff from Isotope sounds pretty good to me good company so their ozone 10 is right up there so again as with the fab filter stuff if you're wanting to do mastering properly i think you should have all the ozone 10 stuff because um you know they've got so much stuff in there that, that's really first class so moving on now to the limiters i'm using limiters are obviously one of the most important things in mastering you need to get things to a certain level and you need to get to that level but still keep it open and dynamic so you don't sort of crush all the transients and you don't smash all the sound so that it's sort of sucked down that's kind of the secret key to being a good mastering engineer is knowing how to use that and how to eq into the limiters and stuff like that if you watch my channel you'll see loads of stuff on that but Again, fab filter, I don't work for them, but this is the standard one everyone uses, the Pro L2. I use it all the time, love the sound of it. You can get it sounding really clean and it has a certain vibe. And I think that's, that is the sound you, you hear a lot out there. Limiters have that kind of thing, you know, where it's like the sound of the 90s was a TC Electronics maximizer thing. So that was the sound of then, or the Waves L2, similar to time, um, because everyone was using it and you, it's got that kind of imprint on it, if you like. So that, I think that's the same with the Fab Filter over the last sort of five, 10 years, they've sort of dominated the limiter space. And that's, you know, that's the sound. So using that, you kind of get that sound and go, oh yeah, I recognize that. So that's why Fab Filter Pro L is sort of a go-to for most people. Uh, another one, the next one I use is the Newfangled Audio Elevate. Love this. Mainly I love this for the clipper and I like it for the transient section because I can play around with this. You can get the tracks pretty loud in here, especially for dance music, I like using this. I can play around with the transients and the clipper and get things pretty loud without it sounding too like distorted or tight sounding because you can manipulate the sound a fair whack in it. So if you don't use this, definitely worth a look. It's a cool one to have in your in your toolkit. Another one that I use um, is this Flatline Clipper from Submission Audio. Great company. This is really super simple to use. Looks a bit similar to the Fab Filter. I think they've got a new one out now, but I like this because it's just really easy to use. I sometimes put it before a limiter, just to sort of shave a few peaks off, stray, stray peaks. Sometimes I put it at the front of the chain to do the same thing to get rid of a few stray peaks before I go into my equipment. Clippers are great. I've always used clippers uh, and this one is a joy to work on because it's super easy and you can see what you're doing pretty well. So that's worth checking out. And then uh, last but not least is the Ozone Maximizer. Now they've put some new things in this for Ozone 10, which are really good. The soft clipper. Now they've got it here, but it actually in the chain starts at the front. So I don't know what they're doing with the design on why they decided to put it over there because it feels like it's after the limiter, but it's actually before. They've got some new algorithms in the mode section here, which is which are really nice. Um, they've got these this one at the end here, which is this transient one and the classic sound really good it's just really easy to use I really like the uh, bypass the gain bypass there so that I can hear exactly what the limiter is doing but you can get things sounding really nice this transient emphasis again like the newfangled is sort of you know not smashing the transients to death so it's quite nice to, to play with so that's a really nice limiter. And that's it pretty much for my software that I'm using. I'm using a little bit of hardware here and there, but what I'll tend to say to you is, you're not gonna use these all the time. What you want is a kind of 
I, I always look at software in the same way I look at hardware. I've got a certain amount of it, so I kind of tend to just use what I've got and then try and get the most out of what I've got. And then the more I use it, the more I'm gonna get used to the sound. You know, most bits of equipment have a sweet spot or they have like certain frequencies or certain things that they do that are good for that bit of equipment. So then you can just go to it, try that setting, try that thing it's good at, and then go, does it work, does it not? No, it doesn't work on this track. So bin it off, try something else. But just by keeping yourself to a narrow amount of software is a really good practice in the same way that you couldn't afford to buy loads of hardware so you have to work with what you've got in the same way try and do the same thing for software because you can overprocess stuff and you don't need everything on everything all the time as i said at the start of the video what you're trying to do with mastering is use as little as possible to get the highest result all the top mastering guys i've ever worked with they'll do one eq setting and then suddenly the mix just comes together and it sounds great and that's really what you're trying to aim for trying to do as little as possible to you know so you don't ruin the person's mix so when it goes to manufacturing when it goes to streaming services it's going to sound really just a great version of what they've already done so that's really what you're trying to achieve and using these little plugins here and there and these bits of hardware they'll get you there keep watching my channel and then you will see how i use them and i'll give you loads of tips and tricks if you don't follow me on instagram make sure you go there because daily i do little short videos on different mastering and mixing uh, tips and tricks then you can also see them in my shorts here if you haven't but the most important thing is make sure you subscribe because next week i'm going to be giving a giveaway which is going to be really good because it's hopefully going to be my 100k giveaway because i'm very close to that in subscribers so make sure you subscribe if you haven't so that you'll see the giveaway next week when i give it away for my 100K giveaway. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one, bye.